Hello everyone. Sorry for the long gap in posting new videos, but we were busy finishing the school year and then summer stepped in and you understand how things can get busy during the summertime. Anyway, we left off on timers, we discussed different types of timers and we have seen some examples about these. Similarly, today we are going to start with counters. We are going to cover the concepts of counters and then we are going to take some examples regarding them as well. Before we start, I would like to introduce you my two little helpers who helped me in setting up all this recording environment, tripod, cameras, computer, software, everything. So my older son, Ezidi. Hi. And my other son, Jawad. Hello. So you can tell he's the crazy one. Uh, there's the, my daughter is doing some shopping with her mom. I'm sure she says hi. So let's talk counters. Counters are instructions that we can use anytime there is a counting requirement. For example, a replace light is to go on if pump has been serviced 10 times. This means that we can use a counter that's going to count in the up direction and we need to have a preset value of 10 because the requirement says we need to count the number of services for this pump which is 10. In Allen Bradley we can count in both directions up and down depending on the requirement. So CTU block will enable us to count in the up direction, CTD block will enable us to count in the down direction. So what are counters? Counters are programming instructions. Similar to timers, they use memory for their functioning. In other words, in order for us to be able to use counters into our program, we have to create tags for them in our program tags and the data type for these counters will be simply a counter. How do they work? Similar to timers, they are blocks. They will exist to the right side of our rungs, so we are going to treat them the same way we treat an output. Now, once this block is activated, in other words, if we have a logic continuity across the rung that has the counter block as an output, the counter will increment its accumulator to keep track of the number of occurrences of a certain event. The elements of the counter are in two categories, double integer, so the preset and the accumulator values, and we have Boolean category that includes CU, CD, down bit, overflow, and underflow bits. In order for us to successfully integrate a counter into our program, we have to have an adequate understanding of these elements or parameters. The following table summarizes all the internal parameters of a counter up, counter block. Let's start with the ones that we are familiar with from the timers. The preset value is a double integer, which is nothing but a target that the accumulator has to reach before the down bit is set. In our previous example, if we were counting the number of services for the pump, it was 10, the preset value in that case would be 10. The second is an accumulator, which is nothing but the double integer as well, which specifies the number of transitions the counter instruction has counted. In other words, the number of occurrences that took place so far. Now, moving on to the Boolean parameters, the first one is the CU bit. The CU is an enable bit in case of the counter that indicates if the counter up instruction is enabled. And if so, it will cause the accumulator to increment its uh, value by 1 as it goes from 0 to 1. As the CU goes from 0 to 1, the, this uh, will cause the accumulator to increment by 1. So only on the rising edge for the CU, this is going to cause the accumulator to increment by 1. The second boolean is double end, is the dumb bit, sorry. And this, if it's one, it indicates the accumulator is greater or equal to the preset value. We did not have a similar situation in case of the timers. The upper cap in that case was, for the accumulator was the preset value. In case of the counter up, it actually can, the accumulator can exceed the preset value. And because of this, we need what we call another boolean parameter, which is the overflow bit. And this one indicates if the counter accumulator exceeded the upper limit, which is in this case a 2 billion number. In that case, if this happens, this will cause the accumulator to roll over to the negative 2 billion number and begin counting up from that one. In that case, we consider the counter to be not functioning properly and it has to be reset to, to act properly. Where do these numbers come from, the 2 billion and the negative 2 billion? This has to do with the data type of the accumulator, which is a signed double integer. But as the objective of this tutorial is to talk about the counters, I would like to limit, uh, only talk about the counters. I will leave this concept of double integers or simply, in general, the data types to another tutorial. Now, similar to overflow, there is another bit that's called underflow bit, but it technically it, uh, it is not triggered if we are counting in the up direction. That's why only if we're counting in the down direction, we have the same parameters with two differences the enable bit and the UN bit. So 
we have this CD bit, which will cause the counter to decrement by one, where as it goes from false to true. As you can see right now, there's a mistake from Alan Bradley library. It says it will cause the the accumulator to increment by one. In fact, it, it decrements this one. I left this on purpose because you know people do mistake, even big guys like Alan Bradley, right? And the second thing is the underflow bit. The underflow bit indicates if we keep counting down, if the accumulator exceeds the lower limit, which is the negative two billion number, this will cause the uh, accumulator to roll over to the plus two billion number, start counting down from that one. Because of this, this counter will be considered to be acting in an improper way. It has to be reset to, to act properly. Next, we're going to solve some examples about count up and count down. Let's go there. Thank you.